We often hear the expression filter pinging to describe a particular snappy sound that we can obtain out of our modular synthesizer. However, those sounds can often imply two different techniques to achieve them, and today we will see both of them. Let us start by quoting Chris Meyer's words. In modular synthesis, a ping input is a place where you can patch a trigger or gate of any duration, and it converts it into a simple envelope. In particular, some filters and low-pass gates have ping inputs that create an instant attack and fairly quick decay to form a percussive style envelope, internally patched to the filter's cutoff frequency. If the filter is oscillating due to high resonance, this creates simple analog percussion sounds such as classic drum machine kicks. So through this definition we learn that in this first technique we use the trigger signal into the modulation path to generate an envelope with a very fast attack and a slightly longer decay, either through an envelope circuit like an integrator or through the classic non-linear decay curve of the vectoral-based low-pass gates. In this last context, the signal we generated is used to brighten and then darken a sound while simultaneously lowering its amplitude, like with most acoustic instruments. The low-pass gate, originally developed by Don Bucla, controlled the VCA and the VCF with two slightly different curves. Since the vectoral photoresistors reacted quite quickly to incoming gate signal, but it took a little bit of lag to return back to zero, they created, naturally, a very organic decay response. Some other pingable circuits do not use vectorals, and they use um, classic envelopes that generate a sharp attack and a slower, oftentimes non-linear decay curve. Some Eurorack manufacturers use other names for this trigger input, for example, Make Noises DPO has a strike input, while others prefer to stick to this terminology, for example, the 4MS pingable envelope generator and the WMD multimode filter. And of course, there are our Brenso and Kunsa. In Brenso's wave folder, for example, any steep voltage transition from low to high patched to the ping input, for example a trigger or a gate, will shoot the wave folder beyond its highest level and bring it down to the knob's value with a custom design decay. So for example, if I patch my Sapel's clock output, which is a trigger to this input here, I will have this decay that I can adjust through this knob here and make it longer or shorter. I said that it shoots the wave folder beyond its maximum level, so if I open it completely, I still have room to hear this pinging sound. And if I close it completely, I can obtain perfect silence between one strike and the other. This circuit here only detects the raising voltage. So for example, if I am using the end of rise gate signal, which has a duration, you can see that the length the gate stays high, the time the gate stays high is completely ignored. Kunsa also features a ping circuit, but it is quite different. It is DC coupled and it is sensitive to the voltage level. If we fit it with a trigger like we did before, we might experience the same behavior as the Brenso, only applied to the filter. Through this knob we can define the decay time. However, if we use other voltages we might experience different behaviors accordingly. So for example, if we use a gate, Kunsa will open the filter and keep it open as long as the gate stays high. Compare it to Brainsaw's wave folder. It can be thought of as a non-linear slew limiter that integrates only the falling stage. Sample and hold signals, LFOs and envelopes will all have a longer transition from the high voltage to the low one. And we can also combine the two pinging circuits. Like this, by feeding the clock to bring suspending circuit and the sample and hold to consus one or 
we can use the straight clock to the Kunsa and the random clock to Rainsource 1. To sum up the big differences between Brenso and the Kunsa, we can say that Brenso has a circuit that detects only a rising pulse and generates an immediate decaying envelope with fixed amplitude and fixed length defined by the knob. Kunsa, on the other hand, has a circuit that integrates any high to low voltage transition and retains every voltage information, duration, magnitude and trajectory. Brainsource Ping Target is a wave folder that can completely close to achieve perfect silence, while Kunsa's target is the cutoff frequency. However, since Kunsa is a multimode filter, we might experience dramatically different behaviors when we monitor different outputs of the same filter. A low pass filter will brighten the sound and then darken it. A high pass filter, on the other hand, will slim the sound up to its higher overtones and then open the low end back. The bandpass filter will scan through the frequencies from top to bottom. But Kunsa also features another behavior called combo mode, in which every control over the cutoff frequency will act simultaneously over the input VCA. These controls are the knob, the CV input, the volt per octave, and of course, the ping circuit. This behavior progressively reduces a signal's amplitude once the cutoff frequency gets below a certain threshold. When we control a low-pass filter through the ping circuit in combo mode, we will obtain an envelope that attenuates timber and amplitude with different curves to provide an organic interaction between timber and volume in low-pass mode. If we disable the combo mode and use Kunsa only in filter mode, we retain more low end. If we engage the combo mode, we will experience a more natural and organic decay. The combo mode can have other applications that may provide some nice or unexpected tones, but we will see them in another video. One thing worth keeping in mind when using the combo mode is that every control over the frequency will reduce the signal's amplitude. Which is very natural when we are using the low pass filter, but it might sound a bit uncanny when we use the high pass filter. As you can see, everything is fine until here, and then we experience a slight volume drop that we can remove through the switch by setting Kunsa to filter mode again. But yeah, to come back to the more general topic, we can say that the first ping meaning we are taking into account refers to a technique that uses the trig to generate a very sharp attack and a slightly longer, often non-linear decay that increases and decreases the harmonic content and the amplitude of a sound at the same time. If the ping controls a resonant filter, we can set it to self-oscillation and use the ping envelope to create a fast sign sweep that might resemble a vintage analog kick. This is possible on the Kunsa as well, so let's ping the circuit through Sapel's clock output and set the filter to self-oscillation mode. Nice tight kick drum. and we can adjust the decay. We might even want to saturate the CGM a bit. And we can also experience other waveforms. Like the bandpass, which has a longer rumble. And if we apply the combo mode, we will skim a bit of the low end. But now let's move on to the second technique. For the second ping meaning, we need resonant filters and no sound at all. This technique is also called pinging very often, but another term is ringing that we can find in Alan Strange's electronic music at page 152. One of the more interesting applications of this type of filter, meaning the resonant filters, is called filter ringing. 
By patching a sharp transient, such as a keyboard trigger, to the filter input, the circuit will ring at the specified cutoff frequency. You can try this by patching the trigger output of the keyboard to the signal input of the filter. Increase the Q so that an activated trigger produces a decay sound from the filter. Note that the decay time can be adjusted by raising and lowering the Q value. With this technique, therefore, we are not modulating the cutoff frequency as before and we are not even using the filter to process an external signal as well. Instead, the filter becomes our voice and the trigger just briefly excites it into the self-oscillation realm. To ring a Kunsa, you must also consider the character parameter and the input VCA level besides the Q. However, despite those extra controls, the result is very crystalline and consistent. So let's patch our bandpass filter output to the CGM, like this, and then reduce the Q until this very specific spot here. A little bit more and it will resonate again. Perfect. And from this point on, we must patch a trigger, like our trusty Sapel's clock, straight to the audio input. And then gently raise the VCA. You can hear that with a low level, we have a very gentle pinging sound and as we increase it the sound will get more distorted and it will somehow bend the pitch like this and this is also the impact of the character knob all these colors are nice and useful and I encourage you to experiment with this setting and find your preferred one. We can also reduce the length If the filter tracks volt per octave, we can use this control signal to change the note of our resonant block. But since Kunsa is a quadrupole filter, we can set all the filters to the same VCA, Q and the character settings and monitor them through the all output. So let's route all the bandpass filters here, set more or less all the filters to the same settings. like this and then set them to different frequencies like this this for example is too high Please note that with this patch we are using those two signals and through the semi-normalization we are using them to control four filters at the same time. While the first technique is often associated with Bukla systems, this second one is a little bit harder to implement over there due to Bukla convention of keeping modulation and sound separate with different connectors and different cables. If we want to find a vintage example of this application, we can look at Serge's synthesizers, especially the filter that featured a trig input dedicated to make the filter ring. 
Another thing is that the original Bukla Lopas gate wasn't resonant. So to sum up, the two techniques' only similarity is the use of trigger signals to create percussive sounds with a sharp attack and a slightly longer decay. For these reasons, even if pinging can often refer to both techniques, here at FrapTools we prefer to use it to talk about technique number one and to use ringing to refer to technique number two, following Allen Strange's convention. But still, the big takeaway is that with the Kunsa filter you can do both. And with that being said, I think that we can have it here for today. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.